tune into Economic Divide with Mika Batakhvayi, the HSBC scandal. All one time, our current member of HSBC's super not so secret Swiss banking club, tens of thousands of accounts holding some $100 billion in assets. But the scandal doesn't end there. We're going to reveal to you the secrets and how it may impact you. Now, in this program. Inside the bank, all this money were coming from mafia, from narco traffickers. That's Hervé Falciani, the HSBC whistleblower. Some HSBC clients, kings and princes. Even the Clintons on the receiving end, along with Al Qaeda. But the warning signs were there a long time ago. I think it was 99.8% of the uh, customer files they had, uh, the money that was being sheltered was illegal. It's the vast scale and scope of the tax evasion, $100 billion, based on data that's been leaked to French authorities from inside the Swiss branch of the HSBC to include over 100,000 clients from 200 countries and territories. No, maybe it's the clients from models to rock stars to even terrorists. Whatever the case, is truly amazing in almost all respects. Maybe it's more amazing that there's been only one arrest so far in this case. This is Economic Divide's HSBC leaks from the beginning. My job was to upgrade and improve the uh, IT infrastructures. Inside the bank, all this money were coming from mafia, from narco trafficking, from criminal activities like blood diamonds, and tax evasion, of course. And all this was there without control. Two thousand fifteen should still see strong equity and credit markets because we believe that central banks will more than compensate for any weakness that we see in economic growth. Accommodative monetary policy from the ECB as well as the Bank of Japan and the tailwind of a weaker euro should benefit European equities vis-a-vis -vis other developed market equities. The faces behind HSBC. That's an HSBC promo for how money will be used to bring returns for clients and, of course, profits for the banks. Underpinned by different policy settings around the emerging market world. But how can a bank or an institution that's the second largest private bank in the world even be operational after the scandal broke out, one of the biggest in banking history? HSBC tax scandal. If there had been benefit fraudsters, many of them would have faced jail. The money comes from the Swiss subsidiary of British bank HSBC. Il s'agit de plus de 180 milliards d'euros. Swiss authorities carried out a search at HSBC's Geneva office and announced that a criminal case had been opened against the bank. This is likely to have huge repercussions on India's black money investigation. From France to the UK to India and the US. The HSBC scandal covers the four corners of the world. The Swiss arm of HSBC is being investigated in France over leaked files which allege the bank masterminded a stunning 181 billion euros in tax evasion over just the years 2006 and 2007. Among their clients, Parisian marijuana dealers, arms traders, relatives of dictators, as well as doctors, lawyers and celebrities. Some of the other famous clients, regimes in the Middle East. Like Jordan's king, Abdullah II. King of Morocco, King Mohammed VI. Prince Bandar bin Sultan bin Abdulaziz al Saud, Saudi Arabian diplomat. Bahrain's Crown Prince, Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, also on the receiving end, the Clinton Foundation, and the Golden Chain, which has been linked to Al Qaeda. It's no surprise, of course, but we have um, faces like the members of the Saudi royal family, which is built on, in effect, criminal activity. It's built on robbing the country of its natural resources. 
uh, enormous amounts of wealth, wholly unaccountable. And of course, they then get mixed up with all sorts of uh, uh, characters and forces involved in things like money laundering, illegal activity and so on, because that's actually the basis of their, uh, their power. Um, they would never possibly put themselves up to um, democratic election because they would never win one. That's why the Saudi state is so, is so undemocratic. So it's not a surprise at all that this uh, takes place. Uh, you need very big government support if you're going to uh, carry on very big crimes and get away with amassing uh, very big fortunes. You can't do it unnoticed. And so sometimes it's a case of the governing authorities, the princes or whoever doing it themselves. And sometimes it's a case of they get a cut for facilitating it. I wouldn't want to make any comment about individual people uh, because we don't know the full facts of their activities or how these accounts came to be. Um, in general though, there are many, many of these accounts used by all sorts of people for legitimate purposes sometimes and sometimes for less legitimate purposes and even criminal purposes in the generality of things. Um, and that, is, that has become very clear. But as I say, what's happened, I think, in recent years is that the international authorities have found out much more about what's going on, not just through leaks, but through pressure on these jurisdictions in offshore centres, as I say, um, so that they tell the Western countries, the home countries, if you like, more about how much money has been stashed away and who it belongs to. So it's difficult to be sure about any individual's bank account and what it was used for. That's impossible, uh, really, to say. Tens of thousands of accounts holding some $100 billion in assets. The Swiss leaks, as they are now called, a comprehensive report that has revealed that HSBC broke the law by actively helping some of these clients dodge millions of dollars in taxes, hide assets, and let them withdraw tons of cash. Leaked files show that the Swiss branch of HSBC, the second largest bank in the world, helped clients in more than 200 countries evade taxes on accounts containing $119 billion. Among the clients, relatives of dictators, marijuana dealers in the Parisian suburbs, and arms dealers who provided mortar bombs to child soldiers in Africa. The whistleblower for what's been dubbed Swiss Leaks warned the latest release is just the tip of the iceberg. In November, the leaks permitted HSBC to be charged with helping their French clients of avoiding 181 billion euros in taxes over just the years 2006 and 2007. Over the years 2006 and 2007, HSBC is accused of helping clients commit tax fraud in France in the amount of 181 billion euros. Just how significant is 181 billion euros in lost tax receipts? That's 8% of France's entire gross national product last year, or three and a half times the amount of President Francois Hollande's responsibility pact, which is 50 billion euros in cuts to social services and tax cuts on corporations. It's three times the size of France's total military spending or foreign trade deficit in 2013. And all this alleged fraud was only over two years. If you believe that HSBC is any different from any other major bank, other than it's the one that had a courageous whistleblower come forward. HSBC, the second largest bank in the world, is under investigation in only Belgium, France, Argentina, India and Switzerland, but many hope that more subpoenas are on their way. It's not like uh, the other banking scandals where they've just sort of found out about it and then prosecuted. Here they've actually known about it for a long time and not done anything about it. Um, so I think that the task of, in, certainly the task of investigating the bank and the individual bankers uh, has to be taken out of the hands of HM Revenue and Customs, who simply haven't done the job, and, and given to another authority who might do the job. And I suspect that might be the Serious Fraud Office, who are already investigating other banking crimes and should add this to their portfolio. So it's important to make a distinction between um, the the activities that HSBC is engaged in that people say is immoral versus the ones that are illegal. Um, the latest scandal that HSBC has been involved in is one of supporting their clients in um, undertaking tax evasion. 
um, tax evasion versus tax avoidance. Tax avoidance is simply setting up structures whereby you minimize the amount of tax that one pays uh, versus tax evasion, which is completely illegal. Now, what HSBC has been involved in uh, recently is the process of allowing people to um, to shelter their wealth and um, uh, hide their income um, illegally in order to avoid tax. Well, there's a whole series of investigations underway now in a whole series of different countries into HSBC and its clients. But I think it's quite important to remember about what private banking is for. Private banking is to facilitate people who are hiding money. And a lot of that money is uh, either illegal or tax evasion or some other um, activity like that. Um, when the French authorities investigated HSBC, they found that I think it was 99.8% of the uh, customer files they had, uh, the money that was being sheltered was illegal. Um, which tells you that, in effect, everyone who's using the private bank is illegal. And it's not just HSBC. The private banks you know, are very large and they're all attached to the very big banks. They got away with it, really, because it's quite customary. Lots of people are doing it. In addition, once known, no one, and I'm talking about governments, were motivated to do anything, even when it was possible. We had over 500 billion dollars in assets that were not supposed to be there. Time to take a look at the money in these accounts, especially a comparative analysis on the pre-2008 financial crisis levels and afterwards. Now, you most likely have thought about all the money that was lost because of the financial crisis. Well, think about all the money that's being practically thrown at big businesses, like the ECB, that's the European Central Bank, and trillions of euros, and the US's billions of dollars in QE, quantitative easing. Where's all that money landing? And furthermore, HSBC is just one of the banks. What about the other banks? We need to see banks serve the people instead of hiding the colossal fortune of the rich. If banks are nationalized, they would aid societal development and job creation instead of acting like parasites. There is an investigation against HSBC, but what about the other banks, which all do the same? And that is our question. What about other banks? Or should we ask, what about bank regulations? Weren't there warning signals coming earlier? The 2008 financial crisis was the biggest warning signal yet. But in May 2014, this piece of news should have been a signal of what was to come. Credit Suisse pleads guilty, pays $2.6 billion to settle U.S. tax evasion charges. And what is the significance of Credit Suisse? It is one of HSBC's joint corporate broker. Shocking new allegations from the U.S. Senate implicate banking giant Credit Suisse in a scheme that helped hide billions of dollars. According to the Senate report, Credit Suisse managed about 22,000 accounts for U.S. customers. It's estimated that a special banking unit helped hide up to $10 billion or more, twice the amount previously thought in a recent history of corruption. The Department of Justice filed an indictment against seven Credit Suisse private bankers, and also initiated a criminal investigation into the bank itself. It's been estimated that the U.S. has been deprived of $337.3 billion in potential revenue. In some cases, clients strap tens of thousands of dollars in cash to their bodies to avoid air transit screeners and scanners. In the course of our painstaking, years-long investigation, the department discovered that Credit Suisse and its subsidiaries engaged in an extensive and a wide-ranging conspiracy to help U.S. taxpayers evade taxes. The bank actively helped its account holders to deceive the IRS by concealing assets and income in illegal, undeclared <coughs> bank accounts. These secret offshore accounts were held in the names of sham entities and foundations. And this conspiracy spanned decades. The overall global economy may continue to be sluggish, but this has not prevented personal wealth from surging ahead. This is Credit Suisse Wealth Fund report. Impressive in how it vividly displays income inequality. 
driven by healthy housing markets and robust equity prices. The main finding of the Credit Suisse Global Wealth Report uh, in 2014 is we've seen the fastest acceleration uh, in wealth since at least uh, the year 2000. The number of ultra high net worth individuals, that's people uh, with over $50 million, uh, has also risen. Uh, and at the very top uh, of our wealth pyramid, there's about 128,000 people uh, who we would classify as ultra high net worth. At the very top of the wealth pyramid, there's about 128,000 people who would classify as ultra high net worth. The Swiss leaks number of accounts, 106,000 clients. Pretty close, isn't it? So what we've seen over the last few years is um, the unfolding of the relationship between banks, which are too big to fail or too big to jail, um, as well as regulators and government and the relationship that they've been um, undertaking for many years. Um, so over the years, we've seen the unfolding of schemes that have been going on for an awful long time, like uh, um, FX rigging and uh, LIBOR rigging and money laundering. And now the latest that has um, unfolded is tax evasion and more specifically uh, HSBC and their activities. Um, what we've seen is that because banks have um, this, this reputation of and um, being too big to fail, supported by governments um, and also enforced by regulators, um, we're seeing that banks have been able to get away with many forms of criminal activities. Um, and we're not just talking about the unethical, immoral activities, we're talking about criminal activities without any form of prosecution. Well, HSBC, like many other uh, banks in uh, the West and around the world, have used tax havens such as Switzerland uh, to help their clients avoid or not pay tax in their own home country. And this has gone on for many, many years. It's something of a tradition. But places such as Switzerland have secrecy laws. Uh, it's very hard for the authorities, tax authorities, to find the money. So it was entirely legal, and that's one very big reason why nothing was done about it. It was also culturally accepted for many decades. In recent times, though, it's become much less acceptable. Uh, there is much more move towards transparency and openness around banking, and the tax authorities in every country, including Britain, are clamping down on this sort of activity. So um, they got away with it for quite a long time, but no longer. All the major banks have private bank uh, um, facilities attached to them. And there's a whole network of countries as well and financial centres. Uh, Switzerland is one, London is increasingly another, but they exist all around the world and they're interconnected. The, um, in, uh, the Carib some of the Caribbean islands, all these are really uh, used and their financial centres are used to suck in money from the rest of the world. Um, much of it ill-gotten, uh, a lot of it is criminal, and they facilitate each other's activities. So there's lots of um, deals between them. The regulations are designed to have enormous loopholes so that the very rich or the very large criminals can get away with money laundering, tax evasion, and other criminal activity. They all really help each other in some way. And this is the most shocking thing. When we realized that uh, internally it was not possible to change enough the, the, the systems, we had to, to create a plan to force legal authorities to act. I had to get the DNA of the bank. I had access to 100,000 names from more than 170 countries. We needed not only to get the most sensitive data, like the names, but, but also the counterparts, the transactions. We're talking about secrets. Well, as you learned there, for the most part, having money in offshore tax havens or Swiss bank accounts isn't exactly illegal. So what is the big fuss? Aside from the bank knowingly advising clients on how to evade taxes, it is the respective governments who are losing money in the billions of dollars. And then what makes this even worse are those very same people with these accounts who essentially have dirty money on their hands and are contributing to politicians, to lawmakers. So who loses out at the end? The taxpayers. I 
like to put on the record an apology from both myself and from Douglas for the unacceptable events that took place at our private bank in Switzerland in the mid 2000s, uh, which is clearly an apology we'd like to make to you all, to our customers, our shareholders, to the public at large. Um, it clearly was unacceptable. Well, just to be clear, what are you apologising for? The lack of uh, controls and the practices which now judged with benefit of hindsight we would not be at all comfortable with if they were happening today and which have clearly resulted in damage to trust and confidence in HSBC. This apology and the reasons behind it doesn't quite go with the details that whistleblower Hervé Falciani has revealed. Our attention now turns to the politicians, in the UK in particular. Quite a different story there. Accusations of dirty money supporting UK politicians, especially the Tories, was evidence in the following exchange in Parliament. Linked to the HSBC tax avoidance scandal are seven Tory donors, including a former treasurer, treasurer of the Tory party, who between them have given nearly £5 million to the Conservative Party. How can the Prime Minister explain the revolving door between Tory party HQ and the Swiss branch of HSBC? I saw this list just before coming to Prime Minister's questions, and one of the people named is the Labour donor Lord Paul, who funded Gordon Brown's election campaign. I, I am very clear. People should pay their taxes in our country, and no government has been tougher than this one in chasing down tax evasion and tax avoidance. But the following case takes the cake. The case of billionaire donor Richard Caring, whose money has been directed towards both the Tories and Labour. He actually had extended the Labour Party a loan of some £2 million at one point. This money alleged to have come from tax evasion facilitated by, you guessed it, HSBC. One reason for tax avoidance in the UK, Lord Fink, the former Conservative treasurer who threatened to sue at Miliband over his comments on tax avoidance, has conceded that the practice is normal in British society. It seems that tax avoidance in the UK is worth the risk, since penalties are so weak that even though many countries have instigated criminal proceedings against HSBC, Britain has not. One famous US political family has become a consequence. One headline reading, the Clinton Foundation received up to $81 million from clients of controversial HSBC Bank. Certainly a blow to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign were she to run, since she was expected to make inequality a key issue of her 2016 campaign. And now we're seeing the, the first cries and calls where the public has been informed of these activities, um, and yet we're still yet to see um, any kind of uh, banks being held accountable for the criminal activities that have been happening under their corporate entities. Helping their clients avoid taxation is something that many banks have done for many years. Now, in the particular case of HSBC and the Swiss bank accounts, it is not yet clear uh, whether there was any other criminal activities involved in it or anything illegal for that matter. It's probably the case that in, in some cases, not necessarily the HSBC one, people do launder money and they hide money because it's come from criminal activities. Uh, but no one yet knows for sure how widespread that is. Well, I think it's no accident that there's a strong political connection to all this. You know, in criminal circles, uh, their view is that in order to uh, carry on in criminal business, what you need is protection. Uh, and they don't mean protection um, provided by other gangsters. Uh, they mean protection from the state and from the governmental authorities. Um, and so when you're dealing with very large amounts of money like this, it's no surprise at all that there's uh, governmental support and governmental backing. And indeed, members of governments are involved in this because we are dealing with very large amounts of money which can't go unnoticed. Um, people do know they're there. We can know that hundreds of billions of dollars are now paid in tax. Without tax, you don't have infrastructures. You don't have modern society.
Greed has no limits. What truly is revealing is that most, if not all, account holders are millionaires. And basically, one of their aims through evading taxes is to save money. At the same time, they're breaking the law, yet the average citizen is paying for taxes at every turn in their economic life. I'm Kavit Get in touch with me through our links and addresses below or the old-fashioned way, economic divide at presstv.ir. See you next week. By the way, this is not the end of the HSBC leaks, not by a long shot.